Hello, students, and welcome to my screencast on biochemistry. This one will deal with uh, reviewing just a little bit about atoms and bonding, and then mainly water. And water's properties are where we started with this unit. Uh, the next screencast will go over macromolecules and then enzymes. Okay, this is directly from your study guide. Uh, the Google Doc that says sample short answer problems. So just a hint, I wrote these out, so it's, uh, it's definitely some stuff that you're going to want to review. Can you review why is water a polar molecule? All right, and then from that, how does hydrogen bonding work? And lastly, what are four properties of water that make it vital to life? Describe each one. Students, so go ahead and pause the video and see what you can get from those. All right, so go ahead and pause. Now it's time to check yourself, okay? We're gonna go back through the slides that I presented. Um, we're gonna go over how water is polar, how hydrogen bonding works, and there's four properties of water to make it vital to life. Okay, so to go over why water is polar, first of all, we need to review uh, a little bit of uh, chemistry, a little bit of electrons. Don't forget that we want eight. Eight is great in our outer uh, shell, in the valence electron shell. So atoms are going to do things to get those eight electrons. They're either going to share them in a covalent bond or they're going to transfer those electrons in an ionic bond. So here's a covalent bond between hydrogen and oxygen. So this is going to form water. So here we have one, two, three, four. You can't see my head. Five, six, seven, eight electrons in that outer shell. Hydrogen right here is a little special because it's just got the inner orbital, the S orbital. So it only needs two. Ionic bonding, it's going to give one up. All right, so the sodium is going to give up its electron to chlorine. This becomes positively charged. It's called a cation. This is negatively charged. It's called an anion. Because they have opposite charges, now they're going to be attracted to each other. This sodium is going to be attracted to the chlorine, and they'll form a lattice. Okay, so why is that important? Well, what you need to know here is that there's covalent bonding happening between this hydrogen and this oxygen. Remember that hydrogen wanted two in its shell. I know I said eight is great, but hydrogen is a special element because it's so small. Oxygen wanted eight. So they're able to share this electron. So this is a very strong bond between the H's and the O. It's called a covalent bond. But it's not equal. Oxygen has eight protons. It's a more electronegative element. It's going to be bigger. And so it's going to share them unequally. It's kind of like if you were sharing with uh, your younger brother or sister if they were in second grade and you were stronger. I'm jumping a little bit ahead of myself. Really quickly, what makes water so cool? I mean, it makes up over 65% of us, and it can exist as a solid, liquid, and gas on Earth. So here's the polarity. We're going to see that the electrons are going to be around the oxygen more often. That's going to make the oxygen more negative. The hydrogens will be more positive. So you can think about it like Mickey Mouse. So these hydrogens, they're more positive. They're fun ears. And the, the face gets a little sad. It's a little negative. As a result of this, the oxygen has a slight negative charge and the hydrogen has a slight positive charge. It's really important because it's going to become an emergent property of water. Due to the oxygen being negative and the hydrogens being positive, there's attraction between water molecules. So remember, inside the molecule, this is a covalent bond. This is very strong. This will not be broken. Between molecules, they're constantly forming bonds and constantly breaking in water, and these are called hydrogen bonds. So think of it like a magnet. This magnet is going to have a north and south. This magnet has a north and south. Well, north and south like to combine, so they might uh, form like this. Later on, they might form like this. But the north and south are going to be near each other, so the water molecules are going to line up with the negative oxygens, hydrogen bonding to the positive H's. Why is this important, you might ask? Well, very good question. It's important because it's going to give water emergent properties. That means one water molecule by itself can't do these four things. But a lot of water molecules together with the power of hydrogen bonding, which is due to polarity, can do these four properties. And these four properties allow for life. 
So pause the video and see if you can remember or describe these four properties. Now that you have the names here, can you describe what's going on? All right, let's check yourself. Cohesion and adhesion, right? Water likes to stick together like a couple, and it can also stick to other surfaces. When you get out of the bathtub, you might see water stuck on your finger, kind of forming a drop right here. That would be cohesion to the water molecules to themselves and adhesion to you. Well, why is that important? It's really important for plants and how water gets all the way from the roots all the way up to the tip top of a tree. As it, the water evaporates out of the stomata, the hole in a leaf, it's going to pull up the next water molecule because they're cohesive. They cohere to each other. It's going to help pull it up against gravity. And it can also adhere to the sides, to the sides of the uh, tube, which is going to help it go up the plant. Without this, they'd have to use all their energy just to get water up to their leaves. So because of uh, transpiration, because water evaporates, it's able to pull the next one up. Why else is important? Well, it helps to cool us down. Water holds a lot of heat. So when we sweat or when plants release water vapor, it helps to cool the organism down. It also takes a long time to heat up. Remember in class, I told you if you go outside and you play uh, football and it's really hot, hopefully your body won't overheat because it takes a while for the water to warm up inside of it. You should still drink a lot of water and take breaks, of course. Uh, this is important. Lakes and oceans can absorb a large amount of heat uh, during the day, uh, only warming up a few degrees. So therefore, those wild fluctuations in temperature won't, uh, they won't have wild fluctuations in temperature. So hopefully that'll help keep fish alive and those ecosystems. Water, because of the hydrogen bodies, when it gets to about four degrees Celsius, they start to form these lattices. And these lattices are gonna hold as it freezes. Most items, when they're solid, will sink in their liquid state. Think about taking solid iron and putting it into liquid iron, it's gonna sink. But ice floats. And that's because these hydrogen bonds have formed a lattice and it's decreased the density. If you remember, density is mass divided by volume. So the volume went up. So D is equal to mass divided by volume. Since the volume goes up, this density is going to go down. And so water is able to, or excuse me, ice is able to float on top of water. Well, why is that important? It's really important because when, oh, I thought I got to erase it. When uh, lakes freeze, this freezes it from the top down so that the fish can stay alive, so the ecosystem can stay alive. If it didn't work this way, oceans would be all frozen already. Uh, Earth and life wouldn't be possible. All right, the last one. Water is a universal solvent. It's able to dissolve many things. Look at this picture and see if you can kind of zoom in on it. The positive, oh, excuse me, the negative O's are surrounding this positive sodium ion and the positive H's are surrounding this negative chloride ion, so it's helping to pull apart or dissociate that salt. Uh, so this works with all polar molecules and it works with a lot of ionic substances. This is really important because it helps to dissolve nutrients and carry items throughout our body. All right, students, I hope that you are able to uh, review water this way and go through the emergent properties of water. What is water polarity, how does water polarity lead to hydrogen bonding, and well, how does hydrogen bonding lead to uh, properties of water that make life possible? Uh, good luck.